Veil, written and narrated by Rico Mercer. As the bell rang, the being rose, akin to tales of Dracula rising from his coffin as the moon suppressed and overtook the sun. The being had slept naked that night, not being covered by any sheets, an oddity as they usually wore a pair of grey track pants accompanied by a white nightshirt, especially when coupled with the fact that it was a July night. Despite this, the being felt no signs of pneumonia or the cold flu. It was an uneasy night's sleep, but they still got eight hours of sleep nonetheless. The being walked through the apartment, trash strewn about, greenish-black mould growing on the walls, a feeling of humidity and uncomfortable dampness. Ah, that was why the being slept like that. It was because of the humidity making their clothes stick to them with perspiration and moisture. It was why they lay on the floor despite the rancid smell of urine and mould running through the carpet. The being was met with cold tiles that struck their core, causing them to gasp involuntarily. The being walked to the balcony and stepped into the puddle that had accumulated from the rain the night before, now becoming more used to the cold. The being stood for a second, letting the winter winds strike and caress their body, no longer striking their core simply stimulating the bare skin and raising their heart rate, the shining sun having no effect as the bitter frost beat it out. It was ten o'clock, meaning the being had missed the ghost town hours, the time when only a few people had been awake and the city was mostly asleep. As of current, the streets were filled with civilians dominating the sidewalks, living their own individual lives in tandem with everyone. The being clicked their tongue. Deciding that they had sulked for long enough, the being retreated back to the relative warmth of their apartment for some reprieve, only to be greeted with a sight, the result of last night. The victim was splayed in the form of a cross, stigmata and all, their hands stuck to the wall with old, rusted metal nails, leaving them upright, dried blood streaks contrasting the cream wall. Shit, the being thought. They were going to have to repair the holes they'd made in the walls. The victim had no fingernails. They'd been ripped off, strewn at their feet and dyeing their hands scarlet. The cause of death was blood loss, a combination of the fingernails being ripped out, the nailed hands and the heart being pierced, being created by a butcher knife that now lay on the ground surrounded by a small pool of blood. The blood that had leaked from the slit in their left breast caused half of the two-piece suit the victim was wearing to be drenched in their own blood. That perverted pig bastard deserved it, thought the being. The pig was not innocent, and the being knew of all his crimes. The pig should be grateful that the being was the one that got to him first, hence why his death was mostly painless. He got off lucky. The being walked into the bathroom and stood in front of the toilet, lifting up the lid and began urinating. He had been drinking a fair bit of chamomile tea to calm his nerves. The being walked into his bedroom and, after pulling on a pair of underpants, he slipped into one of his usual outfits, a white shirt with a black Sabbath insignia over his left breast, as well as the paranoid album cover over his back, a pair of blue jeans with small rips and scuff marks along the front of the legs a black denim jacket with a white fur trim, and a pair of black adidas shoes. The being walked over to his bedside table and took out three rings, a silver ring with a wolf insignia which he slipped on his left middle finger, a plain black silicone ring which he slipped onto his right pinky finger, and a grey metal ring with blue and orange etchings which he slipped onto his right index finger. The being pulled the top of his hair back and picked up a hair tie, folding the hair into a bun which he tied up. Taking a look at the body, the being began to fret over how much Greer would charge him. They were fickle with their going rate and changed it depending on whether they felt like being a prick or not. The being shook his head and went to the door, exiting his apartment. Across him sat the watcher, her back against the wall, legs crossed, her right arm limp at her side, her left arm resting on her knee, holding a cigarette. The watcher stared at him. Another one? She seemed to have a cold and her voice had gone raspy. Yeah, the being replied, the two staring at one another. The being pointed at the watcher's cigarette, asking, Got another? What's wrong with this one? She asked with the being raising an eyebrow. 
Listen to yourself. You know why. The Watcher scoffed. Dick, she muttered, whilst taking out the packet and giving the being a cigarette. He leaned down, expecting her to light the cigarette for him, or to at least give him the lighter. But instead, the Watcher put her cigarette to her mouth, took a drag and blew smoke in the being's face. Because of your snark, I'm not giving you a light, the Watcher said, lightly smirking. The being rolled his eyes and put the cigarette in his pocket. Bitch, he muttered, as he walked through the hallway to the stairs. Why don't you just buy a pack? You already smoke, so just buy a pack and light it for yourself, she yelled after him. The being turned around as he walked and yelled back, Because I don't smoke enough. Plus, you're the only one dumb enough to let me sting it off you. The watcher scoffed. Don't bother coming back to me then. That's the last sig you're getting from me, asshole. She yelled back. Psycho cunt, she muttered under her breath as she flipped him off, the being returning the favour with his own middle finger. Stingy fuck, he muttered under his breath as he descended the stairs. The Watcher was one of the few people who knew what the being was. She knew what he did. She knew about his perverse and twisted nature. It didn't matter. Whilst the Watcher was indeed scared of the being, she didn't care. She wouldn't tell a soul. She didn't want to, and she didn't need to, because to the Watcher, this revelation meant nothing. It's why the being never did anything to the Watcher. He didn't have to. There was no point, and despite their banter, he admired and liked her. She could live. The being walked down the narrow stairwell and through the glass door, entering the world. That place was a microcosm. It was a place that existed outside of reality. There were others, but this one was the one where the being was truly himself. People walked by and the traffic went back for miles, but these lambs knew nothing of the being. As far as they were concerned, he was the exact same as them. I hope you all enjoyed this short story narration. This is just a little short story I quickly wrote up that I may or may not rework into a full-length story. I got the idea for this story as I was walking home from work and I noticed this door between these two shops, uh, as you can see here. And something about it just really kind of struck me and it was like this idea of a liminal space in which well, no one was aware of, but that something was there. From there, I had this idea of a sort of thriller, with the main gimmick being that you only sort of get an idea of what's going on as the story progresses. And that is from picking up these pieces of information throughout the story, with rather than there being just one giant exposition dump at the end explaining everything, by the end, the audience have finally has a full understanding, and they are on the up and up of what is going on. That being said, there's still a lot left in the dark. Like, who is the pig, and what did the being actually do? Did the being kill the pig? What is the being's dark secret? Uh, funnily enough, I do not have any of those answers. This was just basically a writing exercise, and I wanted to get this idea down as a quick and short short story. When I write the full story, of course, all these revelations will be revealed. So, let's just get to the point. This is basically an update video but you know i didn't want to do that i wanted to give you guys something so i just made this short little one because i've been gone for what like a month or uh three as it seems this transitions to my main point that being the schedule or well lack thereof Due to my awful time management skills, I'm not that good at balancing making YouTube videos and doing uni work. As such, I've decided to do this. During my uni breaks, I will try and put out as many videos as possible. Then, once I finish my break and go back to uni, I'll go on hiatus. The last video, I'll note, hey everyone, this is going to be the last video, and I will be gone for about, like, four months. After that, I will be back. When I'm on break, put out as many videos, rinse and repeat. I just wanted to establish this because of just how fucking inconsistent my uploading schedule has been and I hope you all understand. Currently, I've been working on three videos which should hopefully come out within a month. Hopefully, please do not take my word for it. I don't know. 
uh, and hopefully as well over this break I get through my backlog of videos. One final note is that once I near my final drafts for my projects, so that being my books and the manga, I will be making a separate channel that will be focused solely on book and manga updates. I'll post a couple here occasionally, but this will be the sole purpose of it. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this little video and short story. If there's enough demand, I might even make this into a PDF, but again, that's up for debate. As always, have a wonderful day and night. Stay healthy, stay safe, and remember to stock up on your apples, lest you wish to be my therapy patient. Bye!